Welcome to another session of using the Cleviscope Frequency Response Analyzer. Today we're going to use the low impedance jig which we've just been developing to measure a 22 microfarad ceramic capacitor. These have very low ESR and impedances down to just a few milliohms. Let's get started by looking at the jig. Here's the schematic of circuit B which is what we'll be using to implement the jig. The signal generator drives a very small loop through RF and the unit under test. This loop has to be low inductance to avoid polluting our measurements. We have two channels, channel A measuring the signal generator output and channel B measuring the voltages across unit, the unit under test. We can derive the voltage across RF by channel A minus channel B. Channel A is terminated so that the signal generator sees the correct termination value, but channel B is not because the unit under test is such a low impedance. Here's our first handmade jig. We're using two 0603 1.5 ohm resistors as RF, so that gives a total of 0.75. The unit under test is connected between it and the return to the uh, BNC. And we've got a termination for the SIGGEN signal on channel A. We have to keep the loop area as small as possible, which is why the signal out of the signal generator goes through a, the small loop from RF through the unit on test back to the ground. That's to minimize inductance. Channel B samples the signal across the unit under test as a four wire measurement without interrupting the current flow between the SIGGEN RF and the unit under test back to the ground. We do have a production test jig in development and it will be available soon. This is what we're expecting to see for impedance and ESR. It's out of a Samsung data sheet. Let's get on and measure a real capacitor. Now we're going to use the new low impedance test facility in the FRA module. We're going to test a Samsung 22 microfarad ceramic capacitor. These have got very low uh, impedance uh, and very low ESR, effective series resistance. Let's start. So up here we'll set the test frequency to 1 kilohertz, and we'll go up to 65 megahertz. Um, we'll go with a 6 gen amp of 6 volts, and this is using the CS701. We go for as high a voltage as we can manage. We could use the CS1070 to get even higher, but there is some reduction in capacitance if the signal is too high for a ceramic capacitor. We'll go for 20 steps per decade to give us good resolution. Just beep once with a constant amplitude of 6 volts. Down here we we're going to choose uh, the impedance analysis type, and now we have some choices as to what to plot on channel B. We can either show the effective series resistance, or the quality or dissipation factor, or phase. We'll go for effective ser series resistance. Uh, we're using a very low impedance reference, 750 milliohms, because we're going to be trying to measure down to a few milliohms. We're going to use circuit B, in which the unit under test is directly probed with channel B. There is a 50 ohm termination on channel A, but that doesn't affect the measurement in any way, so we're not using uh, the coax termination set to 50 ohms. There is no termination on channel B because the unit under test is such a low impedance. Right, let's start. Right, notice that we are plotting impedance in ohms and effective series of resistance on channel B. We can verify by looking at the scope display that the signal is not too large and is not being clipped. Right, it's finished. Now you'll notice that we've got some new buttons up here, these two. This is for linear or log amplitude axis. So we'll make it log and you'll notice that the amplitude for the A channel is now changed to log and we get the, dis the characteristic capacitance, uh, capacitive impedance that you see in the data sheets. 
We'll do the same for the RESR. And let's make the two the same. I'll overtype this with 10. Let's just review the capacitor model for a moment. We have a, the capacitor, and then we have the effective series resistance and effective series inductance in series with the capacitor. The effective series resistance, RESR, limits the power dissipation of the capacitor. The effective series inductance limits the high frequency performance of the capacitor. The impedance of the inductance starts to dominate the impedance of the capacitor. We can see that in the standard characteristic curve of the impedance plot, which we see right here. Looking at the ESR, we can see that for this capacitor, it is varying between 5 milliohms or so, up to around 125 milliohms. That's what sets the power dissipation in the capacitor. Now let's assume that an 0603 capacitor can dissipate about 100 milliwatts and that in fact we're drawing an amp from this power supply. That means that we can estimate the dissipation in the uh, capacitor from the ESR. It will be um, power equals I squared R, I squared equals 1, so R equals power over I squared, which equals 0.1 over 1, which is 0.1 ohms. So 0.1 ohms sets the frequency range over which we can dissipate 100 milliwatts, and here it is in green. I see a range of about 3 kilohertz to 20 megahertz. Quite useful. Now we'll turn to the impedance of the capacitor as presented to the rest of the circuit. We see at low frequencies it's around 5.8 ohms or so, and then the impedance reduces as frequency increases until we get to the self-resonant frequency where the ESL matches the inductant the impedance of the capacitor. The ESL impedance is going to be around a nanohenry or so at this point. As the frequency increases, the ESL dominates the impedance and the capacitor becomes a higher impedance. We can also place markers as you can see. Now one of the uses of a capacitor is as a means of reducing ripple in a power supply. Let's assume for argument's sake that the ripple should be less than 50 millivolts and that we're conducting a current of 1 amp. That implies that the impedance of the power supply has got to be less than V ripple over I, which is equivalent to 50 millivolts over 1 amp, or less than 50 milliohms. This capacitor can be used to reduce the ripple to less than 50 milliohms in the region shown by the blue line. This blue line extends from about oh, 200 kilohertz up to around 5 megahertz. Outside that range, we have to use other capacitors or active circuitry such as a voltage regulator. If we plot the phase instead of the ERESR, well, let's do that again and do a start sweep. The phase has now been plotted in uh, log, which is not what we want, but we can change that in a sec. Uh, we can also use the inductance cursor, sorry, the LC cursor, and I'll show that to you in a second. All right, let's just make this linear. When we change from linear to log, we auto scale the plot so it's visible. And now we can use this, this new cursor here, which is the LC cursor. And you can drag the tracer to any point in the graph and it'll show you the effective capacitance and series resistance. So at this point, it's uh, 1.822 ohms impedance, 17.48 microfarads, and 44.94 milliohms. As we move the cursor, the tracer on the plot, we can see the capacitance changing. And this is quite useful for checking out the performance of the capacitor over frequency. Here we see it sort of stabilizing at about 16 microfarads. At low frequencies, it's the 22 microfarads claimed by the manufacturer. As we go up to the self-resonant frequency, it's no longer capacitance, capacitive, as the self-inductance starts dominating uh, you can see it just changes to picohenry there, 
and it's now an inductor. And as we go up, we see the inductance rising until it gets around one and a half nanohenries, and it stays at that point. We can check the impedance right up to 65 megahertz, and it's it's one and a half nanohenries or so. We can also see the ESR. It's around 50 milliohms at the moment. Uh, in fact, right down here, it is at the self-resonant point. It's a matter of only about 5 milliohms or so, 5.8 milliohms. So, this capacitor is a good capacitor for decoupling the power supply over a frequency range of about 200 kilohertz to 5 megahertz, assuming 1 amp and uh, 50 millivolt ripple. Uh, and uh, it won't have high losses because we know that it'll go over 3 kilohertz to 20 megahertz for the same current level and won't get too hot. So, there we go. We've actually used this tool to find something out useful about this capacitor, which is not in the data sheet. Thanks for watching.